night guys it is a hot sweltering dog day afternoon here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where the little dog and I have been out getting heat stroke and almost getting arrested selling our organic homegrown non GMO corn a big crime here in the Finger Lakes, but now that we are back from the police state trying to find some shade here on this steamy, sticky, it is Wednesday afternoon, August 25th, 2021, somewhere in there. So we have gone from a hurricane warning to a heat stroke advisory. Yes. Uh, so anyway, how many days ago uh, was I over there in Russia, you know, talking about how Vladimir Putin was uh, preparing for this, uh, these upcoming climate talks? Well, this is how, uh, I guess, Narendra Modi, what is this planet eater? Oh, this is the garbage man coming to haul our garbage away here take it away 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 uh, so this is how India the country of India is planning to you know meet its Paris climate goals to save the planet you know this is how India is transitioning from a uh, from a fossil fuel economy to this greenwashing economy and uh, from oilprice.com was that you know oilprice.com is this the second article in a week I noticed that brother Tom has uh, also found this article just to if anybody is suffering any delusion that uh, this planet is weaning itself uh, on fossil fuels Let's go look at what will soon be the single most populated country on planet Earth. After I try to get the corn juice off of my old man glasses. Okay, let's go over to India. <clears throat> India won't be giving up on fossil fuels anytime soon. Do you think so? India's population is projected to grow to 1.52 billion people by 2036 in the next 15 years expected to surpass China to be the world's most populous country around the year 2031 despite the fact that India's growth rate growth rate is slowing this decade's growth rate is estimated to be the lowest since the nation's independence from Britain it is still growing all the same this is what people do not understand about the difference of all of this crap about slowing growth rates I guess people these clueless morons who, who do not understand that a slowing birth anyway that's a whole nother rant for another time let's this is a rant about fossil fuels yes the monumental size of the subcontinent means that India's trajectory for development will have a massive impact on the rest of the world as the global community struggles to come together to mitigate the impacts of climate change. In addition to the overall growth of the population, yes, there are important demographic changes taking place in India which will considerably increase the country's role and impact in global greenhouse gas emissions as well as the struggle to curb them and to develop new climate smart technologies more than half more than half can you say more than 750 million people more than 700 
50 million people are on track to join the middle class. Uh, quoting some article in the Financial Express, quote, in fact, because India's demographics are much younger compared to China and the U.S., India's middle class could be the largest middle class in the world in terms of numbers of people by 2025 in the next four years. While this bodes well for the livelihoods of millions of people, it also means an increased demand for a wide range of goods and services from legions of people. This translates to greater energy use and greater emissions. At present, India is the third largest carbon emitter in the world, following China, number one, and the U.S., number two. See, this is why uh, India is called the crouching tiger. China is the devouring dragon. Uh, the U.S. is just the U.S., uh, whatever that means. In India is the crouching tiger. And my guess is that India, if it's not already, uh, will surpass the United States uh, as being, you know, the biggest uh, country of planet eaters on the planet. Uh, this is a big surprise since it's going to both be the number one in population and the number one in the middle class. All right. Unfortunately, India is not yet in a position to fulfill its growing energy needs with clean and renewable energy. As it stands, it will barely be able to keep pace with its increasing energy needs using all of the fuel sources, clean or unclean, available to it. Uh, this is it's quoting some study from whatever S&P Global Paths is, quote, the sharp growth in energy demand anticipated over the next decade will make it imperative for India to ensure that oil and coal supplies grow accordingly as renewable energy on its own may not be able to cater to the entire incremental demand, creating challenges in lowering emissions at the desired pace. And this is a classic example of, uh, you know, when you, when you keep hearing this crap, about uh, how many times have I tried to explain this, me and uh, how many other people, about how, how renewable energy is taking a larger and larger share of the total energy pie. What that uh, greenwashing disinformation leaves out is that the total energy pie is growing at such a rapid pace that the amount of fossil fuels at the very least is remaining unchanged and in fact in India even if the it's just like even if the birth rate is going down the population is still going up this is and this is a the other thing going hand in hand with that even if these clean, green, renewable energies, which are all a bunch of BS, anyone with a brain knows, uh, even if they do take a larger piece of the pie, if the pie is twice as big uh, in 10 years as it is now, 
you know, this isn't rocket science, people. It's, it's not like I'm some genius. Well, I am a genius, but you don't even have to be as smart as me, okay, to figure this out. This really, I mean, people even uh, not quite as smart as me can figure this out if they take five minutes to read beyond the propaganda, the greenwashing propaganda. But anyway, I, once again, I'm getting off on my own rant. So we are going to get back to this article in oilprice.com. At present, petroleum, meaning the, you know, petroleum, otherwise known as oil, represents about a quarter of India's energy mix, while coal, the dirtiest fossil fuel and the first fuel source that needs to be completely eradicated in the struggle to curb climate change, represents nearly half of India's energy consumption. So between oil and coal, 75% of uh, India's energy is now produced by oil and coal. <clears throat> the rate of consumption of oil and coal are only expected to grow in the coming years. India is currently investing in increased production capacity for oil, coal, and gas, and will continue to do so for the foreseeable future. This is Indian Oil Corporation Chairman Shrinkanth Maldav Vaidiva. Yes, take it away, shrink rat. <clears throat> Quote, global energy outlooks by agencies across the board post and prior to the pandemic have pointed out that India would be the leading energy and oil demand growth driver over the long term and none of these have been changed by the pandemic. There is a need to bridge the energy access deficit in the country. Yes, yeah, so, you know, one of the needs, of course, is air conditioning. What is the statistic was that if, uh, if everybody in India, which is pretty much like this far from going wet bulb, if everybody in India bought a window unit AC and plugged it in, what is it? I can't remember that just putting a window unit AC in every house in India, would, I, would it equal the total amount of electricity usage in India today? Uh, that that would double, just, just that. Uh, I can't remember, I mean, the, the statistic is pretty startling. <coughs> in a cruel irony, Many of the poorest countries which have contributed the least to greenhouse gas emissions stand to carry the burden of global warming's heat waves, droughts, rising sea levels, and extreme weather events earlier and more acutely. India is no exception. Okay. Many of the poorest countries which have contributed the least to greenhouse gas emissions, they just said in the first paragraph that India right now is the third biggest greenhouse gas emitter on the planet. In a cruel irony, many of the poorest countries, of course what they're talking about here is that the average Indian consumer uh, is a, you know, uses a tiny fraction of what an American consumer does. This is why India now has, what, four times the population of the United States, but uh, as a country uh, still emits less. They're talking about per capita usage, 
but of course this per capita usage is getting ready to soar as people come into the middle class and start to act more like Americans, which is what everybody on the planet wants to be, is an American. How about that for America-centric? All right. Uh, while the subcontinent's impact on climate change is growing and worrying, it continues to have a smaller relative ecological impact than many developed countries. Per capita, India's contribution to greenhouse gas emission pales in comparison to the United States, for example. Uh, at the same time, since there's going to be one and a half billion of these planet nibblers, you know, okay, here we go again. Planet nibbling versus planet eating. All right, one and a half billion planet nibblers is the same amount of effect on a planet than, you know, uh, 350 million planet eaters. All right. At the same time, India can and must do more to mitigate its impact and, re and refocus the trajectory of its development in a more climate smart direction. While India has met its climate targets, yes, as proposed at the Paris Climate Agreement, this confirms the fact that India, okay, India the third biggest greenhouse gas emitter on the planet technically has met its commitments to the, the, the way that this is drawn up, this greenwashing BS, India can, can, can hold itself up as an example in COP26 that we're doing, our, we have met our commitments. Uh, this is how ridiculous. Uh, this confirms, this confirms that the Paris targets were not sufficiently ambitious. Do you think so? India must set and keep much more stringent climate goals as this month's UN climate change report sounds a code red for humanity. Yes, uh, so as we said about petroleum accounting for 25%, coal 45%, analysts told S&P Global Platts that India will be looking to pursue its planned refinery expansions as well as its coal-fired power projects, a sign that there is still scope for demand growth for both oil and coal in the foreseeable future. What's weird about oilprice.com, uh, oilprice.com uh, is one of these places, what they're doing, I mean, it's a, it, it, it's a, uh, it's a newsletter for fossil fuel investors is what it is. So, oilprice.com can sit here, you know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, and, and, you know, and talk about how we need to get rid of fossil fuels. And what, of course, they're doing is they're telling fossil fuel investors to keep your money in fossil fuels. If you want to make money off the collapse of a planet, as we found out uh, a few days ago, well, invest in some sort of Russian Arctic oil uh, expansion project or go over to India, put your money in fossil fuels in India. Anybody looking to make a dollar off the collapse of a planet. Okay, this is what they're telling 
their investors without telling them that. All right, so let's break this down. So S&P Global Platts Analytics expects India's oil products demand to grow by an average of around 250,000 barrels of oil per day, per day, every year over the next decade, supported by population growth and a steady rise in disposable personal incomes. The International Energy Agency recently said that India could witness the single biggest increase in energy demand in the world over the next 20 years with the potential for oil consumption rising as high as 4 million barrels per day to 8.7 million barrels per day by 2040. So right now India is sucking up about, what would that be, about 4.7 million barrels every day of the year uh, now, and by 2040 it will be uh, burning 8.7 million barrels of day a day every day uh, by 2040. The group also said that a stronger push for electrification, can you say, a, an air conditioner in every home, efficiency and fuel switching could limit oil demand growth to under 1 million barrels per day over the same period. Yeah, we shall see. Um, Indian policymakers have said that the country's oil demand is expected to double by 2040 and it will look to boost its refining capacity from the current 200 million metric tons per year to 450 million metric tons per year. There you go. Um, Roman Kramachuk, Platt Analytics Head of Scenarios Policy and Technology Analytics, said a key challenge for India is the fact that 70% of its CO2 emissions come from burning coal predominantly in the power sector. Quote, India is clearly not facing the situation in some Western economies and regions where power demand is flat or even dropping. Do you think so? Uh, Platt's uh, model expects India's annual electricity demand to g demand growth to average 4.4% this decade. Uh, quoting this analyst, building non-emitting new capacity to meet this new demand will be a challenge with these strains further ex exacerbated if India were to push to cut back generation from coal plants. There's no way out. Uh, Okay, the country's coal power capacity presently at 203 gigawatts is projected to grow to somewhere between 220 and 230 gigawatts by 2025 or sooner with the commissioning of under construction coal plants. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the growth in coal consumption is meant to meet rising demand from industries, a per capita rise in energy consumption, and increased connectivity of villages to the grid, industry sources said. Industrial coal demand in India is expected to remain firm 
as cement, power, and steel companies are all dependent on coal with a lack of affordable alternatives. Uh, yes, uh, it starts to get a little bit technical, but the bottom line is coal-powered plants would run their plants for longer. Yes. Uh, all right. So, when one considers new plants set up in the last few years and those already being set up, the dependence on coal is not going to come down drastically. Do you think so? And, uh, then we look at the carbon factor, blah, blah. They get into all of this carbon credit crap that I have no time for. Uh, okay. One metric ton of coal with a carbon content of 78% and a heating value of 14,000 BTU per pound will generate 2.86 metric tons of CO2 when burnt completely. That's one metric ton of coal. How many tons? I've already forgotten. Uh, anyway, this goes on, but I think we get the point, guys. So this is how, so will Narendra Modi, I'm sure Narendra Modi uh, is going to show up at COP26. Not so, I, I guess uh, Vladimir Putin, people are still waiting to see if uh, Vlad even shows up there, shows his face around there. But I assure you, Narendra Modi is going to show up at COP26. And, uh, and be, you know, patting himself on the back for meeting uh, India's Paris climate commitments. There you go. Uh, anyway, I need to uh, get out and uh, meet my daily corn commitments. Every day I make a dozen ears of creamed corn. So I'm off, I'm off to cream corn while I still can. And uh, So I'm thinking about, I've lost my mind, I am thinking about more than doubling the size of the, of the bog garden. This is where that flood came through. One week from today, this place was a roaring torrent of muddy water uh, just about to uh, flood my house so uh, I'm thinking of doing some more flood control look at this you never would have known that a flood came through here look at this who would know that it was one week ago that uh, we were being hammered by uh, this hurricane, Hurricane Fred, and now we're being hammered by a heat advisory. But it sure is gorgeous in the bog garden here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Get out there and enjoy your bog garden while you still can. Bye, guys.